Product research tools that help you quickly and easily analyze niches are excellent tools to have. But if you didn't already know, the sales data, although very accurate, are estimates. And an important step after you've discovered a viable niche is to verify the sales volume that was reported through these product research tools. So if you're not doing this extra step, then you're setting yourself up for failure. In this video, I'll show you a couple ways you can verify the sales data to help you improve your confidence on whether or not the market you've just discovered will actually move the amount of units that you're expecting. But first, my name is Crescent, and if this is our first time meeting, welcome to my channel. My passion is sharing tips and strategies on how you can create a successful Amazon FBA private label business. So if you enjoy videos like this, or especially if you've been around my channel, consider subscribing. All right, let's get started. So first, why is it important to accurately know the sales volume? Well, you should have predetermined your profit margin during the planning phase of product research. The profit margin multiplied by how many units that sell per day will allow you to calculate your monthly profit. If the sales volume isn't high enough to meet your monthly profit goals, then you'll need to reevaluate the market, such as finding a way to add more value to increase the sale price or get a lower unit cost so you can increase your margins. Otherwise, you should pass on the product. Now, let me show you what I mean by estimates in the product research tools. All right, so for example, let's use a vegetable chopper. And if we were to pull up the niche here in the search results, I like to use the Chrome extension from Jungle Scout to analyze these niches. And so if I were to run it right now, it's gonna pull up all the data for this vegetable chopper niche. And you'll notice that all the listings are shown here and the monthly sales volume is displayed in this column. But if I were to hover the mouse over the column heading, you'll notice that it says 30 day unit sales estimate. And so regardless of the tool that you're using, all of the data that it's showing you for the sales volume is gonna be ex estimates, and it's all based on their own algorithms using the BSR and other factors. One other thing you can do too, so you can get some additional data so you can compare them, is to add your products to a product tracker. And for example, Jungle Scout has an excellent product tracker that will also give you some additional information. So for example, if I was to add one of these to the Jungle Scout product tracker by clicking this plus sign, you'll notice that that product is now added to the product tracker. And if I expand this, I can see a chart showing me the daily sales volume and what it's estimating here as well. So you can see here it's estimating 260 units. And if I were to come here and change this to 60 days, it's gonna show me a graph of all the sales over the last 60 days. And again, you'll see here that it says units sold and it's an estimate. Now, if you were to hover across these bars, some of these might actually show that they're not estimates and the EST text there will actually disappear. I'll see if I can show you one like this one. Okay, so today's is not an estimate, 386 units sold. All right, now, when I do product research, I wanna get as much accurate data as possible so I can mitigate as much risk as possible. So it's always very important to make sure the data that you're collecting is the most accurate as possible. So beyond using the Chrome extension and using a product tracker to give you an estimate, you'll notice, again, this said 246 units per day. And if I go back to the Chrome extension, it's estimating 251 units per day. So already Jungle Scout has a little bit of a discrepancy. And so the only real method to collecting true sales data is to use the 999 cart method. And I'll show you an example. If we, again, if we go to the vegetable chopper niche here, what you wanna do is add the top 10 or top 20 listings to your cart. And the reason you wanna add that many is because you wanna track as many of the top listings as possible. And secondly, not every listing will allow you to do the 999 cart method if the seller has placed a cart limit, which means they put a max order quantity on how many units you can purchase at one time, you will not be able to use the 999 cart method on their listing. So that's why you wanna add 10 or 20 and hopefully you'll get five 
or 10 listings where you can do the 999 cart method to collect true sales data. For example, what I'll do is I'll take these top ones right here and add them to my cart. Okay, add to cart. And then I'll do that for the rest of these. All right, so I've added them all to my cart. So if I come over here now, you can see that I've added all of these to my cart. So if we start with the first one, I'll click here, change the units to 10 plus and go 999 and hit update. And you'll notice it gave me an error saying that I don't have enough room for that many. So that can't, so I can't do the 999 cart method on this guy. And then on this one, do the same thing, hit update, same thing. I can't add that many to my cart. Go to the next one, update. All right, so here's the first one where I can do the 999 cart method. This one says the seller has only 250 of these available. So that's perfect. So what I wanna do now is record this in an Excel spreadsheet. All right, so this is the Excel spreadsheet that I use and you can set it up in any way that makes sense for you. So what I do here is I have a column for the product so I can keep track of which listings that I'm tracking, how many days that listing has been active because I like to keep that metric, and then the position or the ranking that that listing is at at the time that I recorded it, and then I keep track of the number of days, and you wanna track this for about seven days to 14 days until you have enough data to determine a good baseline for what the average daily sales volume is, okay? And then the last column here is the URL, to the listing, so if I wanna jump over to look at it, I can. So if we go back to Amazon, I will copy the listing title, paste that here, and today they have 250 units, so I will record that here. And then they are ranked in position number three And if I open this in a new tab, I have a plugin called Keepa, which will load in a separate window down here. And it's gonna tell me how many days this listing has been active. And I like to keep that to determine market saturation, which I have a video on, and I'll leave a link to it over here. Okay, so 76 days. Okay, and let's move on to the next one. Set this back to one. Okay, here's another one that we're able to get the 999 cart method for. So let's copy this and it's 747 units. Okay, and then let's open this in a new tab and we'll grab the number of days this listing's been active, and it's 297. And they are in position number four. And then set this back to one, go to the next one. Okay, so this one we can as well, 615. Open this in a new tab. And there a new listing, six days. And they are position one, two, three, four, five. Set this back to one. Okay, so this one has a cart limit of 10, so I can't do the 999 cart method on that, so let's set it back to one. This one I can, 290 units. Let's open this in a new tab.
1,319 days. Position six, sorry, position seven. This one has a cart limit. Can't do it on that one. And can't do it on that one. Okay, so this is just a small sample size. You wanna do 10 or 20 listings to get more than just four listings. Okay, so I have four listings here for today. So what I wanna do now is every day at this time, so tw every 24 hours, do the same cart method to record the data so you can get a full day's worth of sales. So after seven or 10 days or longer, you'll have enough data so you can average out how many units they're selling per day. All right, as you can see here, I'm an example spreadsheet with some sample data that I put together that spans six days. Now, as you collect data each day, you can figure out how many units each listing is selling by subtracting it from the previous day's value. So for example, on the 21st, this listing has 387 units remaining, so if you subtract it from the previous days, 414, you'll get how many units they sold that day, and so on. Now, once you've collected enough data spanning seven to 10 days, you'll be able to get a good average daily sales volume that each listing is selling. And then you can add all those listings together to get a good group average of what the entire niche is selling per day. Now, I wanna point out that when you're tracking these listings, you wanna make sure you're not tracking the sponsored listings. You only wanna track the organically ranked listings. And once you've collected enough data and you have an average daily sales velocity using real sales data, you can now compare that number to what the product tracker and what your Chrome extension numbers have told you. And hopefully you'll be able to now make an informed decision on whether or not the niche is really moving the sales volume that you need to hit your monthly sales profit. And if it doesn't, you'll have to reevaluate the situation or pass on the product. Let me know in the comments if you use this strategy or if you're gonna incorporate it in your future product research. This is a very important step that you must do in order to mitigate additional risk. All right, thanks for watching. If you found value in this video, you know what to do. Hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. And to make sure you never miss a video, click that bell icon to turn on notifications. There's also a link in the description to our community forums, which you should totally join. And if you're looking for more tips and strategy videos, click or tap over here. And as always, thanks for watching.